Welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I am Chris Clements reporting to you from a undisclosed location. <laughs> All righty. Hiding out. That's okay. I'm hiding out. I'm hiding out in Nashville, Tennessee. So, okay. All right. There you go. Well, yeah. there's a lot to cover today. This has been, so, so this is, there's a, you know, this is Thursday, the debate, the, the second GOP debate was yesterday. Yeah. Um, last night. Yeah. It was so, it was so entertaining. Oh my gosh. Did I, it was, it was one of the most entertaining debates never. Yeah. In the history of debates. Yeah. It was a complete waste of time. So there was I no mean, first blink who came out on top for you. Um, Donald Trump. Well, that seems to I be mean, the general I, consensus, it even did, from the Democrats. It did, yeah, I mean, it. Um, you know, Nikki Haley, I thought, was good in her, you know, she's she's got the policy stuff down. I mean, she's very, yeah. she's very knowledgeable on this stuff. I think Chris Christie had one of the best moments when he talked about, if we're going to be pro-life, we have to be pro-life after the womb as well. Talking about, you know, fentanyl crisis, you know, addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought Ramaswamy had toned it down, thankfully. I thought Mike Pence was ugh, just not great. Yeah, he was, he had, again, like, like the last debate, I think he has the most to lose, and he is absolutely coming up flat. He is not rising to the occasion. And he, he tried to be funny. He tried to pull off, you know, a Chris Christie. Chris Christie talked about how the president's sleeping with a teacher's union member. Um, and so we're never going to get reform. And then Mike Pence tried to make a funny, like, oh, I sleep with a teacher. I've been sleeping with a teacher for the last 38 years. It's just very awkward. He's just not. <laughs> he, he, Mike Pence talking about sex is not funny because he's so weird about that. He won't be in the same. He won't be alone in a room with a woman without his wife there. Yeah. Which means he'll never yeah, have a, it, which means he'll never have a female chief of staff. And that's. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, not, not not in this day and age. And uh, but I understand and I respect what 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 his point is there. But yeah, he came off extraordinarily flat and not really with a lot of not a lot of sound bites no. coming out of him. I thought no. <laughs> I thought the Donald Duck sound bite from Chris Christie was actually one of the more memorable ones. It was memorable, but it was a groaner. Um, but yeah, but but he didn't have he, to go there. Yeah, he, he could have. He, he had it was making. Succinctly. He was making a great point, and he could have stopped it right before that. Um, DeSantis did pretty well. Uh, I think he he met expectations. The expectations were probably pretty low. Tim Scott, I you know he's not a, a brawler, and it came out. He did not do a good job. I mean, the last seven well, minutes, <laughs> and you're top, you're bringing up curtains in the residence of the UN ambassador? What? Yeah, yeah, I don't know why the the whole Tim Scott Nikki Haley sort of you know conflict at the end there it didn't didn't make a lot of sense to me what that was all about. It was more of a distraction. Um DeSantis kind of jumped in and actually made some coherent points. Um I thought he did I mean overall pretty well. Um you know, you had the Univision person who I don't know why she was there, but she was there. Just she to was there to be liberal she, leftist yeah, talking she, points at them. She was there to be the MSNBC rep, right? I mean, let's yeah. let's frame these these questions as liberal as we can. It was just very bizarre for a Republican debate. That um, I thought for sure. Bergam was probably who? the most. Yeah, <laughs> who Bergam or who? <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but it's just. No, I, I get it. He's going nowhere, but you know what? He's one of the more rational guys on the stage in the sense oh, of he, he, I mean, he, joking, everything, everything he yeah. says is solid. Everything he says yeah. is solid. He's, and he's a true 10th yeah. ten, Amendment guy. He's a, you know, he's a governor. He truly believes he goes go back to the states. Uh, I thought Christie was in the same lane. Um, you know, I, I, I just don't understand why... I, I thought Tim Scott's hit on Haley was weak. Curtains, fifty thousand dollar curtains, that's crazy. Especially because they were put up by Obama. And then I thought Nikki was did a good job trying to go after DeSantis on the fracking and the drilling. 
and DeSantis got, I think he was surprised by that attack um, and mm. didn't handle it great. Um, and she didn't, I, I don't feel like I, I got a good sense of like, okay, what exactly did he do? Um, but it, the biggest problem with the debate was just the, the crosstalk. I mean, it was, that was, uh, it was just so confusing. It was almost impossible to, and the sound was weird too, for me at least. Um, so I don't know. I don't think it changed anything. I don't think any numbers are going to change. Uh, and what, the only thing that it has changed well, it has, this isn't a change, but this is, it's ramped up the discussion about whether they can get a Brian Kemp or a Glenn Youngkin to get into this race. But you know what? We don't it's need it. too late. We though, don't need another think. candidate. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I, what, I think it's almost too late. Glenn Trump Youngkin, is so far ahead. Yeah, Glenn Youngkin getting into this race is not going to push anybody out. Nobody. No, I think Glenn Youngkin is, is smart to bide his time to to govern virginia he's got an election to win this time you know this this yeah, year he's anyway. got he's, he's got stuff and going if on he's virginia. able to win that election is he be able to to, to create an, a majority within the house of delegates and uh in virginia then he's he's gonna have uh a story to tell the next go around along with DeSantis. yeah but right now the polling is going trump's way so much despite what's happening with his personal empire What's happening with all the indictments and his his I don't know it was kind of a milk toast speech for the unions the other day or last night. It's going to be hard to see how this turns between now and when the Iowa caucuses be, you know happen in January. Yeah, I it would be at this point it would be shocking if there was any outcome other than Trump winning Iowa, Trump Trump winning New Hampshire. Trump winning South Carolina, and then Trump sealing up the nomination on Super Tuesday. At this point, yeah, that's that's the playbook. Well, I mean, that, that's court. the script. Uh, I I mean, I don't see any way that that changes at this point. And adding another person to the mix is not going to do anything but help Trump at this point, because nobody's dropping out. I mean it. So here's I will say this. Well, Bergam has got to drop out. No, I think I mean, Bergam. Is, I, I think Bergam's the think kind he's of going to stay I through Miami. Uh, maybe I mean he'll stay. At this point, he's just raising money. Yeah, but he's I just, think I think it, uh, yeah. the question mark is whether Mike Pence makes the next debate. Yeah, that's the, and whether he should after this this performance. I mean, I you know I it, to me. Pence, Bergam has his own money, so Ber Bergam can stay in as long as he wants. Sure. Pence is going to, I mean, he his fundraising will stop at some point. If it isn't, it's got to have slowed down. And, you know, he, he doesn't have personal wealth. It's not like he's going to be like, okay, guys. I mean, unless his staff works for him for free and his, he can travel for free, which he can't, you know, I at, th at some point I think he probably has to say, Nice, nice knowing you guys. Um, well, but and, at, because and at some point you have to, you, I mean, you have to question why, and we, we, we talked about this after the last debate, why are you running? And Mike Pence is running for some, some idea that he has to protect his legacy as someone who stood up to Donald Trump during January 6th and notably saved the Republic. Well, right. And, and he did that. And, and, and but he's not so, going to get rewarded for that in, in the, so he's not going to get rewarded for that, for the, for, for the, as a or from the general electorate and as, as a matter of politics. So I think he's, he can live to fight another day in, 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 an, in another way. Um, I thought DeSantis probably did the best last night and continues just to hang on. Although his poll numbers continue to plummet. Uh, Nikki Haley, the way she went after uh, Vivek or Vivek, I didn't think that went over very, very well. I thought um, Vivek, you know, probably redeemed himself a little bit. He had some great points on immigration. He had some great points on education and the, and transgenderism. And it, it seemed like he he's the only one willing to say certain things that nobody else wants to say. So he redeemed himself in that regard, but he's not really running for president. Right. He's a stand in for Donald he's Trump. A stand -in and I think there's Trump. a general consensus for that. Yeah. 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 And he's again, he's got money so he can stay. I mean, so I, I think if I as I'm as I'm kind of gaming this out of my mind, 
Um, with Bergen having Bergham having his own money, Pence not. Pence is probably the next mm. to run out of money. Uh, Haley and Scott, I think, probably can hang in there for a while. They both have pretty decent sized super PACs so supporting them as well. You know, DeSantis has the biggest. Uh, and, you know, Vivek and Burgum can self fund. So it's going to be six at least for a while, yeah. uh, in, in my estimation. Because uh, I, I got to believe that both Haley and Scott want to try to at least make it to South Carolina. Now, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they won't. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, at, at the end of the day, the, the, the debate did not showcase the best of the Republican Party. Yeah, it it was it felt like an undercard debate, uh, and I think that those, more so than the those last criticisms. One. I mean, even Gavin Newsom and uh, who was there, which mm -hmm. I, I thought might be a mistake, but actually he had some good, decent comments and uh, good political comments. I heard one commentary today that he's actually just trolling along, waiting for Joe Biden to die. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Well, it's not, um, not and untrue. I think, I, I think that's probably true. It's not untrue. I mean, Joe Biden, as we saw this week, is not getting any healthier. Uh, he had another spill. He had, had some other mental mishaps. Well, I, I mean, guess that's we, what we can call them now. You you know, it, a nice colorful euphemism for for you know, complete total brain freezes. Well, but that's you know, where we are, Chris. As a he was he was out there talking about my good old boys. LLJ cool, cool J. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was not, not yeah. His, and then his, calling him his, boy. Well, his propensity to use the 1950s the term came boy, back. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, his propensity to use the term boy to uh, refer to African American men is, uh, would sink any other candidate not named Joe Biden, who is probably the greatest racist president we've ever had, other than LBJ. The guy just well in modern history. I mean, we definitely yeah. had. I mean, he's just raciest, he's, raciest, he's well sir, racisters, <laughs> ra more racist, race, the most racist. <laughs> yeah, uh, and doesn't get called out for it. Yeah, yeah. which is unbelievable. Um, all right, so yeah, speaking of unbelievable, Robert Menendez, gold bars, four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars in cash, DNA evidence on the cash. Yeah. I mean, come on. So if you don't know, Robert Menendez yeah. is a senator from New Jersey. He is the senior senator from New Jersey. The other senator is Bookie. Uh, Bookie. <laughs> is, is, Bookie what Corey. Is, what, Corey, Book, Corey Booker. Um, Bookie Corey. Bookie Corey. I like that. Corey better. Booker, who was a rising star in Democrat politics for he's a while. He's kind of faded from. Yeah, I don't know exactly why, because he's a, he's a, he's a, decent guy or at least seemingly so he's a pretty bright articulate guy um and so menendez as you might recall was was indicted on corruption charges back in 2015 mm -hmm. that case stretched out over the he didn't resign he you know booker defended him all the senate democrats you know said oh this is just we have to wait and see now part of the motivation was that chris christie was the governor and so Chris Christie would have appointed Menendez's replacement had Menendez resigned. Fast forward, so 2018, the case goes to mistrial, where he, he beats the rap, basically. It's a hung jury. And apparently just goes right back into the corruption game, because that's when things pick up. And now it's uh, the Egyptians. He's an Egyptian businessman, has been uh, funneling money to him on bribery, the the, the allegation is bribery for treatment towards Egypt, foreign aid in particular. Um, and there's you know, gold bars, there's tons of cash, there's a Mercedes. Uh, it's got a lot of drama. Um, and there's now more than 30 Democrats in the Senate have called for his resignation. He did a press conference this week saying, I'm not going anywhere. So Democrats yeah, are going to have to deal with this. For Democrats, uh, the polling over the last two weeks for the Democrats, despite our good friend Simon Rosenberg's uh, whitewashing these polls and, and, and some of his updates that he sends out to his folks, um, 
the polling has not been good. And, the, and one of the things that's polling really strongly against Democrats is, is that of corruption. And yeah. we see that in the Hunter Biden scandal, and that is going to continue to drip, 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 drip. We saw uh, 250, what, thousand million, $250,000 of cash being wired to to uh, the president's residence. Yes, um, yes. Well, to, you know, to it, an account. An account had, where his, his residence was. His residence was, as, as, was, the, was the, yeah, the address on record. Was, was the address, for, and Hunter was living in Malibu. So that there's that drip, drip is going to continue. Um, Bob Menendez, as you might even recall, was connected to another scandal, which the press refuses to to report on and has kind of brushed it as much as they can under the rug. And that's that the the scandal of Jeffrey Epstein. He was a frequent flyer on Epstein Air. Is that right? To that little island of I did. I didn't know that. Bob Menendez was Bob Menendez. Yeah, along Dude, that with Bill guy's Clinton, been... <laughs> dressed up in a dress, and uh, numerous other uh, United States dignitaries. So uh, it's just a matter of time before the Democrats were going to throw him over the bus because they can, because the governor is a Democrat. Yeah, it's Democrat, even now. though he he won he won barely this last barely, election. Barely, barely. And and if he resigns or is forced out, he'll just appoint another Democrat. So it's not a big loss. But what they're worried about going into the election is this continuous drip, drip, drip of corruption uh, around the Democratic Party. And if he becomes the poster child along with Joe Biden, that's a bigger issue. Yeah, it becomes a, it becomes a real challenge for sure. Um, but yeah, the uh, I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. So yeah, even John Fetterman. Yeah, John who Fetterman was the first. Who, who senator. Last night they they overrode the Fetterman rule in the United States yeah. Senate by voice vote, unanimous. Unanimous. Vote. You got to wear a suit and a tie. You, you got to dress up, buddy. Yeah, and apparently Fetterman was in on the deal, so it was all very bipartisan. So look, we can have bipartisanship in Washington. So so who's going to dress him? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my my big question. Who's going to address the guy? I, don't know. I will give Fetterman credit for being the first guy to call for Menendez to step down. That was, I was impressed by that. Now you know who's not calling for Menendez to step down? Republicans. Who? Republicans. Yeah. Oh no, because they can use it against him, of course. Well, th- I think it's that, but it's also, I don't know. You can't be consistent about the weaponization of the DOJ and these uh, charges against Trump. And at the same time, say, well, Menendez, you know, although it is bad. Um, so I, I think it's going to be it, it's a li- it is a little bit of a of a weird walk for Republicans because. Any other time they'd be saying that he should. Re- I mean, they did re- say the, the charges this time seem way more serious than the ones before when all the Republicans were saying he should resign. And now. Uh, it's very quiet on the Republicans. Well, the Republicans side. could have benefited from that. And and the, right. the, the charges before it's been leveled or, or been said that uh, that was actually something Obama had cooked up to put pressure on him to for voting for Obamacare. And, and so there was not a lot of there there. But for, in this case, I mean, a bunch of gold bars and $450,000 in cash, you know, Brand new Mercedes and yeah, but Chris, lots of, lots of I, cooperation. I mean, come on, you've got four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars in cash at your residence sitting around for for sitting emergencies. Around. I mean, I know for everybody does. I mean, this I've is deducted from my savings. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. That was sure. his argument. That's a standard practice, and it's because sure. you know his heritage being Cuban, they have to keep cash at home. They don't trust the yeah. system. They, they don't, don't trust, trust the, the government. System. Like and spies in gold. So, I mean, this is this could be a Republican ad. I mean, in the sense yeah. that, because uh, I don't know if you, I watched the Republican debate during uh, or on Rumble, and during Rumble, every commercial yeah. break, there literally every commercial break had two ads for gold. That's like this is the Menendez for ad. Moving, moving is the Menendez ad. Moving your assets to moving gold. moving your assets yes. to gold. Just ask Robert Menendez. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's the new <laughs> spokesman. <laughs> you know, but the but the Jeffrey Epstein piece is something that nobody wants to talk about in Washington. I don't want to talk tied about it. heavily to. to I didn't Jeffrey know about Epstein. it, so I don't want to talk about it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> I had no idea he was yeah. a he was a he was a frequent flyer. He and Bill Clinton in the dress. 
<sighs> painting of Bill Clinton in the dress. And uh, Prince Jeff Andrew, Epstein's right? Abode. And Prince, Prince Andrew, Andrew has been stripped of everything, yeah. but his brother still supports him, apparently. But, you know, Republicans have their own issues, as I outlined in my dark beer rant last week. I mean, you've got Lauren Boebert being yep. groped in the theater. Well, and she was doing uh, some groping herself. Explaining, do you know who I am? Yeah, well, you're right. everybody knows who you are now. Yeah, not, and then, not in a good way. And then you, you're, you're now we're facing a government shutdown because Matt Gates wasn't indicted and uh, on uh, sex trafficking charges a year ago. So he feels like he's got, you know, a bone to pick. Well, and it's and this this shutdown is so okay. Oh, I, this is a point that I wanted to raise. This this relates to the shutdown, but it also relates to last night debate. Last night last night's debate. Tim Scott made a point that nobody nobody is talking about. And that is that the, a, the majority, the majority of the funds that are being sent to Ukraine are going to be paid back, that these are loans. These are under the land lease uh, bill that they passed. It's similar to what we did with Great Britain and other allies, Russia, during World War II. But nobody's talking about that. And so... All this discussion about how much money we're giving to the Ukraine, which at this point is about 5% of our defense budget. Uh, yes, it's billions of dollars, but the defense budget is almost a trillion. Uh, so the question is, why isn't this more of a, you know, the people who are defending the supporting of Ukraine need to be doing a better job explaining how this is all working. Because if people, if more of American people knew that most of this money was going to be eventually paid back, I think that they would view this differently than the way it's being framed now, which is, oh, we're just shipping money over to Ukraine for whatever. Um, Chris, you have a reaction? Because I know you have been a little bit critical of money to Ukraine. Well, I, I'm, I'm critical of what we're doing in Ukraine, um, mostly because Zelensky, I think, is absolutely corrupt. And I think that a lot of this money is being funneled to unsavory ventures of his own doing. I think that'll come out eventually. I think um, people will become skeptical when we don't see uh, more victory and we won't see uh, more accountability. And I think the Senate uh, moving to uh, uh, an in, uh, inspector general this week mm -hmm. to look after whatever funds go there, which I was searching for the right word. I think that is, that's a big step. But then I think Amer everyday Americans look at the needs of our country. They see what's happening on the border, the flooding of 10,000 migrants every single day. And we don't have a, the, the borders in shutdown. You see in San Francisco that um, the crime ridden, you know, great city that it once was. And we have needs in this country. And yes, it's, it might be only 5% of the defense budget. But we have people here suffering uh, in, in our major cities. Uh, thankfully, we're, we might see some movement on on cleaning up homeless encampments finally, uh, because uh, a, you know the Ninth Circuit reinterpreted their their ruling from a year ago. But you know, and then you still have the issue of, of Maui and people who need help there. We're sending seven hundred fifty dollars to to citizens of Maui and saying, "Hey, good luck. Um, sorry, your house burned down." Right. So I, I think it's more of the president has a responsibility to communicate exactly what you just said. The Congress has a, con a responsibility to communicate how these funds are being used, to make sure that these funds are accounted for and not not here on 60 minutes that, that are being used for first responders in, in Kiev and 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 for other means. Right. We, Americans don't want to see hear that yeah i want to hear that they're being used to win a war against against russia yes it's a proxy war we all understand that but what is the plan how are we going to win and what is the time frame to do so every major uh president has had to recalibrate during times of war george bush had to do it uh even even barack obama had to recalibrate how he was going to fight against terrorism right and he ended up sending a lot of drones into a lot of terrorist camps, killing a lot of terrorists, 
rather than rather than sacrificing American lives. What is Joe Biden going to do to reframe this conflict for the American people? He hasn't done it. Hey, he doesn't, and he's not capable of doing it. So that's, that, that's yeah, a that, larger... that's that really gets to the point. He isn't capable. He, but he, but somebody, his surrogates, Blinken, somebody needs to make that case. They're not doing a very good job of it. Uh, no. And as a result, we now have members of the House who are holding government funding hostage. And I use that word exactly the way it's meant because we've got a shutdown looming. Um, this, this will happen. I don't see any way. It's Thursday afternoon right now. There's no way that this gets done by Saturday night because the deadline no. is 12.01 Sunday morning. And uh, so we're going to have a shutdown. And it really becomes a question of, okay, so how long is it going to last? Because what's going to be the escape route to get out of it? And the Senate has passed, you know, legislation that's kind of sitting as the vehicle. Uh, you've got uh, Kirsten Senator Cinema is working with Republicans on some funding for the border to try to appease the House uh, Republicans who are, uh, you know, holding this up. But it's not just the border. I mean, they, there's their their demands are all over the place, and they're they're impossible to meet under this stricture. So. I uh, the the real question is going to be that so it's going to shut down so who's going to get the blame? Typically, it's been Republicans, regardless of who is in the White House, um, and so we'll see. Now, some polling I've seen shows that that the Democrats may get more blame than normal, uh, but the question is really, you know, how much does the does the administration, does the Biden administration, use the bully pulpit? to beat up on Republicans and will it matter or do is the is the distaste for Biden with the voters so baked in that he actually suffers as a result of this yeah so it's 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 hard to say who who I mean nobody benefits from a shutdown number one number two um you know it seems like the backbenching conservative, quote unquote, conservatives like Matt Gates and others are, are just trying to unseat McCarthy and use this as a vehicle to do it. Um, and I think McCarthy has chalked up a lot of wins for for the conference. Yeah. And I think and ultimately. What they forget is is there's a Democratic president there's a democratic senate and they hold the cards and then the administration just has to figure out how much pain they want to inflict on the populace because they can determine that right so i had i had somebody tell me asked me the other day well are they going to shut down all of tsa and then you won't be able to you know air air travel will grind to a halt I'm like no they shouldn't do that could they well i suppose they could um, and not deem TSA agents essential and therefore, you know, make them work without pay. But I don't see them doing that, but they, but they could. Yeah. I um, because that's, that's what, that's what NBC news and NPR and PBS is saying, Oh, this could happen. Well, yes, I guess academically it could. Will it? That's up to the administration. Yeah. They have control over that. Right. Right. Well, you know, it's going to be Republicans don't control the spending within within them within the agencies, right? Other other than other than appropriations and and the guidance for those appropriations, which they've been incapable of doing. Which they haven't done. Now, I, mean, I understand I like, get how Gates wants to put thirteen appropriations bills on the floor. I get that. I, I'd be all for that. But it's September thirtieth. You guys didn't do your job. They should have done it over now the summer. Have, Yep. I mean, they yeah, they should have got it done. You should have got it done July thirty first. This yeah, before the August break. That's that's when you're supposed to be doing that we, stuff. We talked about it before. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, what a what a mess. So so then after this, after they find an off ramp for the shutdown, is then there a vote of no confidence for the speaker? And well, then you've got chaos. I mean, I think that I don't. I mean, I don't. I, he can call for it. He's not going to win, but. Right. I, I think that and I think McCarthy at this point, it's like, bring it, man. Yeah, I bring, mean, it. bring it. I, 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 I think that the, the, the Gates, people who are actually working like a Jim Jordan 
and um, and and others, you know, are are saying just bring it. Yeah, we're, we're uh, the reports I'm getting from inside the conference are that Gates is he is really, really screwing himself in the sense that there's a lot in the conference that now hate this guy's guts. Um, and well, even more than they did before, because it's becoming a very personal issue, which it's like, dude, I mean, come on. So, uh, you know, well, it'll Chip be Roy interesting to see is, how this uh, plays has, out. Chip Roy, uh, who I actually, I really like him. Um, you know, he's one of the more, he, he kind of, he throws some bombs. He throws, but they're, but they're good bombs. They're, they're, they're nice. They're not, they're good grenades because they're based on fact and ba based on, on what can get done versus what, versus just, just throwing things out there just to raise money. Right. And that's what Matt right. Gates is yeah, exactly. doing. And, and I'll go back to just my, my biggest pet peeve about Gates is that, you know, a year ago he was under investigation with the FBI. He was dating a 17 year old for a time uh, he was under investigation for sex trafficking. That that person, that person turned 18, refused to cooperate with the FBI. The case was dropped. He was nowhere to be found from 2020 to 2022. When that case was dropped, all of a sudden he's everywhere and he's creating havoc within the conference. And that's, it's ridiculous. If anything, he should be counting his lucky stars. He's not in jail or yeah. maybe he should be in jail. I don't know enough about the case, but that's, those are just the facts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out over the next few days what happens. It is going to be a crazy couple of days. Yep. A so so watch days. that. Watch what's happening in Washington. Uh, and then watch. And how many happening. more blunders is Joe Biden going to make within those couple of days? <laughs> well, I think they're going to they're going to start to have to hide him. Um, it's, yeah. going to, it's going to get to the point where it, he's going to they're going to revert to the basement strategy, I think. So. Yeah. One Watch thing we that. didn't speak about really quick is that we had some local news today that that Katie Hobbs had to step aside from the governorship for this is not a blink of the eye. This is not news. So th here's my theory. So this is so for people. Who, I mean, I saw this all over Facebook. Oh, there's going to be an indictment, you know, whatever. So in Arizona, when the governor is out of the state, the next in line becomes the acting governor. And in yeah. this case, it just so happened, and this is this actually happened under Ducey as well, uh, that Governor Hobbs, Secretary of State Fontes, and Chris Mays, the AG, were all out of town from yesterday afternoon until this morning, mid morning this morning, and so for a, a short time, a, a twelve hours, maybe fourteen hours, I don't know exact number, Kimberly Yee was the acting governor. A Republican. Yeah. Okay. And she had to issue this statement that she wasn't going to do anything crazy. Right. Which, and usually when we have this happen, you know, acting governors will make funny things. It's always, you know, everyone makes yeah. it, a, you know, yeah. at one point, Ducey was the acting governor when he was treasurer, you know? Okay. So it happens. Now, my theory is that I, my guess is this is just a theory. I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that Hobbs and Fontes and Mays went to California so they could come back to Arizona on Air Force One with President Biden, who's coming to yeah. Arizona, who came to Arizona today. So yeah, that's my assumption. Yeah, he made a speech uh, about democracy. Yeah, my right. assumption is yeah. that that's, I mean, because- He's really you know, qualified at that. <laughs> LL Jewel, yeah. LL Cool J. He is, he is purposely cool. prosecuting LL his J chief cool. rival for the presidency. Yes, he is well-versed on democracy. Yeah. More yeah. like the banana republic. Oh, and on that note, <clears throat> yeah. we'll, we'll let you go back to Nashville. Yeah, I'm here uh, in Nashville. There's a little band out of San, at San Diego performing tonight at the Ryman Auditorium. The Mother Church, they're called Switchfoot. Oh, speaking Been of Nashville. For a long time. Um, and this is something that, We'll have to get into because maybe this is going to be flame out quickly. But boy, there's a bunch of buzz about the NFL, the cross of you know the NFL and music with Taylor Swift, you know, dating what's his name, Kelsey, uh, uh, Travis the, Kelsey, Travis Kelsey from yeah. the uh, from the Chiefs. Talk about yeah, that talk that, about that was a, a weirdo weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, I, that was I, strange. I, well, look, if I'm the NFL. I'm like, hey, this is great. We get a bunch of attention from people who don't normally care. Kelsey's jersey, check this out. His merchandise, up 400% in sales. 
Well, I mean, the 400%. song that she will write. Yeah, the song that she will write about him after they break up will be a number one hit. I predict. <laughs> I didn't want to because she writes, I wanted the loose end. Yeah. <laughs> you were my loose end. He was the, you, he uh, was the, see, what's, he what's was the, the chief here? of my heart. <laughs> he the chief of my like heart. That. Yeah, he was the chief of my heart. You know, it's it's a running joke. Uh, in our family about the breakup songs of Taylor Swift. Like how many are there? I think well, there's over a hundred. The best one ever was the one on John Mayer because the song sounds like a John Mayer song. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a sad, but true fact about, sad about true fact. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, it, the, the I, I, Swift, look, it may be that by the time continues. it may be by the time you and I get to sit down together next, because I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Yeah. We, the whole thing might have already flamed out. You never maybe. Know. You never know. So here there'll we go. be a lot. That'll, there'll be a lot that'll happen between now and then. <laughs> yes, this, yes, there will. But you'll be holding down the fort. I will. And be. I appreciate We're gonna have that. some special guests and uh, might fly a little bit solo like I did last week. Hey, you know, we might do a. Uh, I'll have to check out time zones and such. We'll maybe do a guest guest appearance from an undisclosed location. You, you should. Sure, that would be great. It'd be late where you are, but all the, the family will have been put to bed. Don't or you? early. Or early. Or yeah. early. We don't know. <laughs> so, reporting from an undisclosed Undisclosed location. location. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. All right. God bless. Thanks Take for care. listening.